All right, you guys in capes and geeks, rogues who are sneaky, thanks for joining me and Roger <laughs> and Jeff as we entertain the geeky. What's going on, Chris? What up? Hi, guys. Oh, Jeff, oh, is, Jeff here. is back. Oh, yeah. So, uh, we're going to talk about Image Comics, your favorite Image well, series. So, it's so a little backstory. Chris and I are a little freaked out about this, and like we're really excited. Chris sent out a tweet to Image. Image retweeted our. I, I didn't even send a tweet. Oh, you didn't send a tweet. I hashtagged Image Comics because we had talked about uh, Walking Dead, and I was. Well, like, we didn't talk about Walking Dead. I, I ranted for there, a good thirty minutes. But we Dead. no, like something that we did say in that was it, we're saying this because we care about comics. It's true. Um, so and as we all know, Image was founded in 1992 <laughs> by Todd McFarlane, Eric Larson. Um. Jim Lee. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we just got on the list of stars of the 90s. Yeah. So. Will, Will Portasio. I'm, okay, I'm going to be up front. This is Jeff speaking. I don't know anything about Image Comics, so I have their Wikipedia page. You know who Spawn is, though? On my phone. I know who Spawn so, is. So Image did something really cool when they came out. Mm-hmm. The uh, Comic Book Authority was basically bullying everybody into putting out shit books that were safe. Right. Uh, safe space books, if you will. Well. And Image said... Fuck, no. Well, hold on. Image wasn't the first one to do that. I mean, Dark Horse did it. Marvel did it. Im- Image did it in a pretty profound way. Because Image, though. they made Spawn, who goes and starts killing motherfuckers. Image also was creator-owned. Yeah. And that was a big deal. Like, yeah. they were creator-owned. So, so as our thank you to Image for getting Entertain the Geeky out there, we're just going to talk... Image Comics. Image Comics for the next 20 minutes. Because, one, their work's fucking phenomenal. Yeah. And two, it's a topic we've never talked about. No, we haven't. Like, we always give all kinds of love to the big Mar- ones. The big Marvel DC. Uh, but, we, but we've given Boom a little bit of love because they're doing good stuff. They are, but we, we neglect the original third, the original, I mean, honestly. I mean, this, this is one of the big three now. Yeah, Image image is. So, Chris, what, go. What What is your... Uh, okay, so... There are a couple of series that Image has done that I've been crazy about, and these have been within the last couple of years. One, Scott Snyder did uh, Witches. Oh, which yeah. Which is fucking phenomenal. Um, basically, they take this spin on, like, a, a witch. Uh, you know, the, eh, 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 I'll get you, my pretty. And uh, he turned it into this fucking dark, scary shit where they're hunting people down. Once they've marked you, you're, you're done. You're getting it. You're getting dead. Is, and is that your is that your favorite or is that just up there? Um, that and Birthright. Birthright's fucking oh, phenomenal. Birthright. You know, I I actually forgot that they published East of West. Oh my god, they did. They did. East of West. The the Jeff, you would love East of West. You would. I'll, it's I'll take your word for it. Post apocalyptic Western sci fi, and death is the hero, and he's just trying to get his son back. Well, that sounds badass. It, it's pretty badass. Saga. Saga. Oh yeah, Saga. Fucking invincible. Which is coming to an end. It's got nine issues left. You know, I've read one issue of Invincible. In- <laughs> did you? In- Invincible's yes. a badass it was series. A, it was an interesting uh, issue uh, where uh, th- this issue took place on uh, like another planet. There, the superhero analog, the Superman analog guy, uh, was visiting his son or something like that. Mm-hmm. I believe. And uh, he, he and his wife were having dinner with his son and his son's wife. And his son's wife was this weird, like cockroach-looking, chitinous alien. Uh, uh, and, and so they, you know, the two Superman dudes walked to the side and he was like, so your wife, she's, she's interesting. And to which, you know, the guy who's, you know, sort of like Superman was like, I mean, she's normal to me when I was on earth, the way that you feel about my wife, that's how I felt about all the humans on earth. You know, I was a weird outcast alien. And, uh, you know, he fits in with his wife, he feels. I thought that was an interesting point that they that, made. That, that is, you're, you've got Just your, picking it up your out of peace. Nowhere. Like, you, you've got your place where you're at peace, and mm-hmm. he had found his. Mm-hmm. Um, chew. Chew? So, yeah. Should I get Matt? He really likes Chew. I mean, if Matt wants to come talk, talk about Chew, that's cool. We'll so, talk about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles run they did. Oh, they did. They did a TMNT run, and that was badass. It was sick. Man. Like, like Donatello got turned into a fucking... Cyborg, yeah. they did. They've done so much. Like honestly, there's so much stuff that that they've done that I forgot. Well, like any any Chrononauts, Bitch Planet, Bitch Planet was interesting. Chrononauts was cool. American Jesus, uh, Rumble. Like I Rumble. I, I feel like I was one of the only guys that got super into Rumble. I tried. That was a fucking cool series. Alex and Ada, Airboy. I mean, these are 
Oh my god. Good stuff. I like just ah. Oh, so I, what what like give give us a little bit of background on one of your favorite image comics. I was honestly going to talk about... Uh, oh my god, I forgot about the Wicked and the Vine. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Witchblade. Witchblade is fucking awesome. Young Blood. Oh, man. Um, Savage Dragon. I remember being a kid and seeing, like, buying comics, buying my X-Men, and buying, you know, your Batman shit, and then walking by and seeing this bright fucking green dragon with this horn just bursting through the cover, wearing a cop uniform, and I'm, I was like, what is that? What is that? And then right next to it, you had this very dark, gritty comic with, with, with beautiful like artwork on the front of just of grit and grime. And it had these spawn written on top of it. I'm like, what is that? And that was my deduction to Image Comics with Savage Dragon and Spawn. And Eric Larson just doing amazing work. And then and, and, and with that, and then seeing Spawn and just seeing how dark and grimy and gritty and violent these comics could be it really blew my mind when i was going from oh my god wolverine got his animanium torn out to fuckers getting their arms and limbs ripped off just because they're walking in a mall it was awesome it was awesome and they've not and, and the best part about images they've stayed that way i mean oh yeah the, their, their comics are not it's not about the blood and the guts no, there's a good story there. there. But yeah, exactly. Like 68 Homefront. Well, like if you if you want to talk something that's rooted in realism, <laughs> like as far as a comic goes, bad guys, like the, the crazy people, the evil ones, they do heinous shit. They're the ones that go into malls and fucking rip people's arms off and yeah. stuff. And Image doesn't steer away from that. Femme Fatale. Femme Fatale was cool. Femme... You know, uh, back to Birthright. Birthright was so kick-ass and refreshing basically you've got a uh, a father and a son that are playing catch yeah and uh the son the ball gets tossed into the woods the son goes to get it never comes back never comes back um and everybody thinks that the dad did something with him but there's no proof oh matt matt's joining us hello i think matt wants to talk chew oh yeah chew yeah, we're talking about Image Comics and how awesome they are. Yeah, our favorite yeah. Image Comics. Chu uh, was actually recommended by... Uh, John Perks. John Perks. Yeah. And it's a great recommendation. Uh, so Chu, those have had, who haven't read it, it is about a uh, FDA agent in a world where the bird flu was a serious epidemic. And FDA holds a lot of power now because of that. Uh Tony Chu, I think is his name. I think so. Is a investigator who goes to like shut down illegal chicken rings. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And he has a, a psychic power that when he eats something, he gets psychic flashes of whatever he ate. So how it was processed, uh, what life it lived before that. Incidentally, if he eats a person or part of a person, he'll learn about that person. Uh, so it's sort of a police procedural crime thriller that also devolves into a bunch of characters with different psychic abilities and Eating people, a complex plot of conspiracies and vampires. And it's also <laughs> really fun. It sounds serious almost, but it's played for laughs sometimes. There's a lot of jokes, a lot of hidden background gags in the art. And it's really colorful art too. It so is. it's almost hard to take it seriously. Well, and they did a Chew game. Yeah, there's a Chew board game. I haven't gotten a chance to play it, though. And I remember hearing there was talks for a Chew TV show. Yeah, that's been floated around. Yeah, that, 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 that's a thing. Um, so, do you read any other Image titles? Um, I, I started reading Invincible. Yeah. But I haven't gotten past, I think, ish, uh, Trade Paperback 3. Yeah. I just, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking up image titles, and I just realized they, they produce, or publish, one of my all-time favorite comics right now, which is Nailbiter. Nailbiter's insane. Like, Pitch it to me. Alright, so Nailbiter, it's it's a story that starts in a small town where five of the last nine serial killers in America have come from. Okay. So, they're try- so it starts off with this weird sort of, uh, an FBI agent goes down trying to figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. He ends up missing. So his partner... Goes down looking for him, looking for him, and they're trying to uncover what is happening in this town to actually have these serial killers come from it. While that's happening, one serial killer got released, and now he's living back in the town, and he was the nail biter. 
Okay. Like, like that was his thing was after he would kill a victim, he would chew their nails. Okay. Um, it's, it's got, and there's a serial killer in town. They're trying to figure out who that is. Very violent, very good. Very, the actual only comic to ever freak me out. There is a scene where, uh, spoiler alert, where the sheriff is laying in bed writing something in her diary, and the panel cuts, and the, the ex serial killer just got out is laying underneath her bed, sniffing her nails. God. And it freaked me out. I put the book down. I was like, oh, that's so creepy. Done. But yeah, Image, another real quickly, another really good thing that Image does is a lot of these comics we, we were talking about, Chew and Nailbiter and a lot of Walking Dead. I mean, obviously. Yeah. You can, you can buy most of these trade paperbacks, volume one, for $10. Yeah. Image is very, Chew, Nailbiter, Invincible. Saga. Saga. They're so good about trying to get readers hooked on their books yeah. that they're giving you the first trade, which is six to twelve issues for ten bucks. For ten bucks, they it, truly care about the reader, and it makes it less of an investment to check out something you don't really know much about and don't know if you'll like. Well, yeah, because right. that's that's one of those scary things, man. You, you you spend money on a trade, you're like, fuck. I hope I like this. Yeah, no. John Perks actually is a long term on the nail biter. He's really oh my god. John Perks will turn you on to some cool stuff. Hack Slash, Dead at 17, Rat Queens. Oh my god, Rat Queens. Holy shit, have you read Ma- Rat Queens? Book? I have the first uh, trade paperback, but I never read it. Dude. It's on my to-read list. You need to read that. Sex Criminals. Sex Criminals, hilarious. And awesome. Just the tip. Just. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, give, give us a little bit of background on Sex Criminals. Hold on, I'm pulling it up. Alright, so Sex Criminals is about these, these criminals who have superpowers... Um, but they only can activate these superpowers while having sex. While they have an orgasm. While that, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of like they, they they can walk through walls and teleport, but it's only when they hit that happy space. Or stop time. Yeah, all and kinds of crazy. So really, these people bone and then commit crimes. It's, it's an amazing book. And then there's a police force. Yes. That has the same power. Of course. That tracks <laughs> these people. Oh, I forgot about Pretty Deadly. Pretty Deadly is a fun one. Oh my god. You can really, you can pick up, if, if there is an image number one on a shelf, pick it up. It's normally a dollar. Correct me if I'm wrong, but do they do Morning Glories? Yes. Yeah. Oh my that's, god. That's <laughs> one I have, like, the big Omnibus first yeah. edition of. That I don't even know if they printed a second one. Not yet. Not uh, yet. Not, um, Lumberjanes. Oh I thought my that god. was an image. No, Lumberjanes is. Hold on, I'm pulling it up right now. I think it, that is It boom. might be Kaboom. I think that's Boom. Uh, yeah, it's boom. One Never mind. Times. Never yeah. mind. No, Morning Glories. Have you talked about that yet? No, go ahead. Um, so it's a, a weird boarding school type of scenario. Uh, it follows maybe six or seven kids. I can't quite remember. And things go from kind of average to downhill immediately. And there's there's like time travel and weird cults <laughs> and uh, Plato's all- allegory of the cave. Just... Every all these weird things are packed into it, and I haven't gotten that far in it. Um, but uh, John Perks mentioned to me that his <laughs> wife had tried to map everything out by like cutting out the pages, yeah, and like t- thumbtacking them together. They, he's got they've got a web on their wall, That's a spider web creepy. from it. Uh, I only hilarious. heard that word of mouth, but that would be really funny. It also makes sense because it's a very convoluted plot. Well, the, the best thing about uh, I've actually read a lot of Morning mm-hmm. Morning Glories. That is the only comic that will piss you off and satisfy you at the mm-hmm. same time. Like, there have been issues I've read that I've wanted to throw through my fucking wall. but And then the next page, I'm like, ah! Oh! Orgasmic with joy and happiness. Like, like that comic right there. Ah, oh, damn. Damn. Obviously, you have... you. I mean, can we, can we hit the big one? Can we hit The Walking Dead? Yeah. I mean, obviously, that is... Image came out being a superhero label. They did. Savage Dragon, Spawn, Pit, Max, yeah. uh, The Darkness, Witchblade. Like, like they were a superhero. It was, it was a different kind of superhero. It was a different kind of superhero, but they were bucking the tides. And then they went and they actually started doing different things. And The Walking Dead is one of those examples. Um, which, which, when it started, did not sell that well. No, it did not. There was in the quarter bin. Yeah. Uh, we, had a, we had a customer at the shop that we used to work at. He went through at a uh, quarter sale. And picked up, I think, six issue ones for a quarter each. Just just in case. Yeah, he's like, uh, I'd like to go through and pick up the issue ones there. 
he's like, last one I sold was a couple grand. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. Now. Isn't, isn't that unreal? Um, but it's I- image number ones are books to get. It, it, really, yeah. Hopping on, it, even if you're not a collector, hopping on image at the start of a series, you give it six issues, and you know if you hooked or not. Image does such phenomenal work. They they really do. Well, that's people's passion projects. Yeah, it's not like it's not like, you know, our dreams are to write X-Men or Spider-Man. Like how awesome would that be for us to write a Spider-Man comic? That's yeah. great. These guys own these characters. The, the Robert Kirkman owns The Walking Dead. You know, Image publishes it. They don't own The Walking Dead, which is amazing. Yeah. The, that business model is just very, amazing. Very auteur-centered business model. Yeah, exactly. If your book doesn't sell, they cancel it. No harm, no foul. But they're willing to give you a shot. And, and, and that's amazing to me, that, that they put the power to the author and the artist to create these tales. But again, it's, it's somebody's passion project, so they're... They they're not putting out shitty titles. Well, and you don't get you don't get summer crossovers like you do yeah. with Marvel and DC. How many image books have been relaunched and rebranded? You know, Spawn. Spawn was the biggest one I think and when that, Al Simmons it, came back. Yeah, and that was the whole point in Invincible recently. Well, Invincible's ending. I thought I heard there was like an actual reboot plot point. There, <laughs> there might have been. We know, know that they they will poke fun at that type of stuff in Invincible though because that's another Robert Kirkman. Yes. Um. So they will make fun of the stereotypical superhero thing. And the best part about Image, they let their stories end. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. It can be over. And, and they've done it. Like Invincible is ending up. We know that Kirkman has talked about the end of Walking Dead. Yep. Um. I think the only title that that's going to go on forever for Image is Spawn, and that's Todd McFarlane, and you know he's he's still enjoying seeing that book done. I mean that that to me, Spawn is the one book that is more mainstream with its style because mm-hmm. you've had different authors, you've had different artists, you've had different people come in and work on this book and add to the Spawn mythos. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it it's one of those things. So it, it obviously that one is going to be very much more, uh, very much uh, similar to the stereotypical superhero story because Todd McFarlane was fucking working for Marvel. Yeah, before that, doing Spider Man. Um, and there's actually, there's a, uh, Amazing Fantasy 15 is the first appearance of Spider-Man. It's this cover that's really fun, blah, blah, blah. They've done that with Spawn. And, yeah, Todd McFarlane redrew it with Spawn on it mm. instead, and it's hysterical. He also redid his famous cover of Spider-Man and Spawn. He did. The um, the one with the webs. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys. I, really... I just described every Spider-Man. Yeah, 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 you did. No, no the, 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 it, the... There's a very iconic image. Oh, we know God, what, what talking issue about. is it? I don't remember. It's, uh, it's, but, it, yeah. I actually have that issue. I actually, any, any time I see a uh, McFarlane Spider-Man, I buy it. You know, I had like three issues signed by Todd McFarlane for like of that Spider-Man issue. Oh, really? Yeah. That's badass. Sold it to Paul Gadney. Um, honestly, what here's what we can say about Image, guys. Scrounge up ten bucks. Talk, yeah. talk to the local guys at the store. Have them run you down the, 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 the trade paperbacks they have for ten dollars. Pick out one that sounds awesome to you and read it. Fucking ask us. Like, get get on here. Leave a comment. Send us an email at entertainthegeeky.com. Uh, and I will say, email.com. Nailbiter, Morning Glories, Pretty Deadly. I mean, you can't go wrong with those. East of West. I mean, I've, I, I've already tooted, tooted my horn here. You've got I, I, yeah, I, Birthright, Rumble. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, it, it, It's everything that they have. I have good. the first issue of Rumble sitting at home. Uh, Witches. Witches is amazing. You can't go wrong. Image Comics, you do good work, and we love you. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like you do it right. So, guys, do us a favor. Um, after you pick up your ten dollar uh, trade, go to entertainthegeeky dot com. You can follow us on all of our social media there. Um, all of it, all of it, and also go over to beastescaperoom dot com. I want you to go there, enter the promo code geeky to get 20% off. How much? 20%. That's fucking insane. That's that's 20%. I mean, that's really close to a quarter. That... <laughs> um, so you get 25% off your next... No, 20. 20. Not 25. Sorry. I said that quarter thing and it messed me up. It did mess you up. Um, you get 20% off your next escape room experience. It's an hour long. It's a good time. Get a few friends to go with you. And Say hi to Ronnie Cobb. Yeah, look for Ronnie Cobb. Where's Ronnie Cobb? Um, and have a good freaking time. Matt, any words of wisdom you would like to part us with? Mm-hmm. 
Uh, keep an eye out for when our tabletop game store on the website will be open. Yeah, we should have uh, some stuff hitting that in the next couple of weeks here. Um, and it's going to start with Merle's Truck Stop in Maine. It's only a buck, guys. Uh, we did some serious playtesting tonight. Literally, my cock hurts. Yeah. A um, couple of games that we're super stoked to be bringing you. Cannot wait to get up there. Uh, I think a couple of those are almost ready at this point. At least one should be ready to release at the same time as Merle's Truck Stop. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, most deaf. Most deaf. But I want to keep the name a surprise so that you check out yourself for what it is. There we Ooh. go. Matt's leaving you in suspense. So guys, uh, pick up a book, a comic book, an image title, read it, and stay geeky. Give it a try. Bye, guys.